Leck and Greg Vegan Camp, the 1st of February 2020. So I'm wearing the mask because the air quality has been really, really, really bad during January. Also a little bit of the end of December last year, but I mean this was like over the, the top. Now we are just doing all kinds of stuff to stay uh, in an environment where you can have good air. So the mask is really good when you go outside. All the particles from the burning and stuff like that is not really good to get into your lungs. How bad is it? In the mornings it's quite bad. It was Today was the, the 2.5 AQI on my level monitor was on 130 and it just gets better during the day. Now it's um, 11 a.m. so the the air quality is a bit better now. As you can see the air quality is, is much better. It's below 100 on all meters but it should be like in Thailand it's safe when it's below 50 they say but in um, in other countries it needs to be below 25 to be safe but if you look it up like many areas are way above 25 it's very few areas in the world where you have below 25 but yeah this is not good it's also the the dry no rain we didn't have rain for the last we didn't have real <laughs> real proper rain the last half year probably and I last time I saw a little bit of rain was the end of October last year and now it's 1st of February so I mean without the the sprinklers and stuff I would just die here probably because it's just the dryness is so insane and I've moved the tent into the sleeping area because of the tent is like waterproof the air cannot penetrate then you have a fan that will just blow air and suck through the filter and blow air into the tent so during the night, even on low speed, I can have zero AQI inside the tent. And then during the day, if I want to have like more airflow and because it gets hot, then I get maybe on full power on the purifier and then I have also like one zero to one AQI. And this whole setup, you can make this setup now with the DIY air purifiers will be around 3000 baht 3000 baht is a really good deal for you, you can anybody almost can do this have a tent air purifier put air inside in all areas almost the real thing that needs to change is that we need to stop the burning of the crop fields that's probably one of the most one of the biggest contributors to the to the real big smoke problem where the air pollution is really really bad for like for weeks or months at a time many areas in Southeast Asia I mean if you want to go Southeast Asia maybe you should consider going to Borneo or like small islands where Borneo maybe Bali and stuff like that if you check the air quality online they have really good air and then just skip Northern Thailand. If you skip no, like Southeast Asia completely, people will need to think of alternative ways of doing things if they want to keep um, people to come to Southeast Asia. The message is, don't come to Southeast Asia where there's bad, bad air quality. You're supporting the burning, you're supporting bad air quality if you come here during that time. And of course we need to mention the coronavirus because it's like a big outbreak in China and also like Thailand is number two so my advice is just uh, stay away from humans wear a mask ask people not to sneeze on you stay at home cook at home don't go anywhere where there are a lot of humans don't touch any humans or probably also animals I don't know I mean we don't know if it can transfer to animals or not but just stay away from humans yeah Simple. You quit your job, work from home, stuff like that, until it settles down. And all of these things are good because the economy will suffer a lot. And that's what we, that's what we want. We want the economy to suffer. 
because when economy suffers people will start thinking of alternatives people will start growing their own food people will start to think of how what they have people start thinking if they if they don't if, if people don't have money and have a lot of time that people need to start to think about what what's going on and i think that will be a good transition of of um, of things because in thailand at least many people can survive without money because there is just access to a lot of things uh, in nature there's so much fruit out there there's just so much fruit rotting out everywhere on the countryside you won't believe how much fruit is rotting around here it doesn't make sense to transport all this food to a place where it just rots even more. If you go to Mung Mai Market, there's just tons of fruit rotting there. But people still buy the rotted, rotting, rotting fruit. But there's so much, in this case, waste, because much of the fruit, I don't know what happens. I don't think, it doesn't seem that they use it for compost. If they were using all the rotten fruit for compost in Chiang Mai, that would be a different story, but I'm not sure they're doing that. Testing the sprinkler system, automatically on and off. We should only water during night actually during the daytime we shouldn't water at all so i have so much fruit that some of these bananas they, they're just compost and these bananas i need to put them in the freezer i already put some in the dehydrator i have like tons of food here and water from the temple so it's just like the only thing i'm missing here is fresh air well now i have it i have the filtered air i'm just missing a big giant dome of water to clear the air all the time trillions of liters of water from outer space coming down clearing all the um, evil particles from the air yeah i just harvested one two three papayas that are in the nets there are like three papayas already ready to get uh, getting harvested today also tomatoes growing over there more tomatoes eggplants and other stuff 12 volt solar battery charging on the solar panel out here this is like a 40 volt 330 watt solar panel in the big land we installed deep well submergible pump that can go down to like 88 meters. We had six panels and that was the water pressure was not enough, we thought. But then we figured out that the water pressure actually was enough, that it was so strong that the pipes broke. So we needed to buy like better pipes. From down the pump up to the surface, there was a two inch pipe going up and that needed to be a better quality pipe. So my advice, if you need to do a um, submergible pump, buy high quality pipes. And then we bought two, three extra panels, but two, and, and then it's just like going crazy. It's a 3000 watt, three HP uh, submergible pump. And then like eight panels, 330 watts, it was just blowing, blowing away the water into the big land longan fields because the longans they need water now and otherwise we will not get fruit and the family that's the way the family survives that's the way the family gets the the money and the last panel the ninth panel just came here and then when we are ready to invest more we will probably buy a battery an inverter and um, a good quality MPPT controller to charge the battery correctly. And then we need a board with a grounded board. Make sure that there is a switch off if, if there's a lightning that hits the solar panel or something like that. I had some amazing jack orange jackfruits. And you can see the seeds here just laying around and waiting for the rain to come so they can grow again. Now the ants are just uh, munching on the remains. These orange jackfruits are just mega good. So January... 2020 was the season for orange jack. The avocado growing here near the bathroom it's really growing well still. So the biggest question is when will it get fruit? And maybe it will never get fruit if it is the same like, like mangoes. Because if it has a lot of water and never dries out, it might never get fruit. But I'm not sure if it's the same concept with the avocados. But let's see. You might go traveling for a couple of months and then see if it dries out. And then, then it will have a ton of fruit when we come back. Also behind the, the bathroom, we have a pineapple. This is this so cool? They are so beautiful. They're so amazing creatures. Longans already getting the small longan fruits. They will be ready in August. These are mangoes. The mangoes are flowering like crazy this year without anything. Any use of flower forcing. It's 
completely insane. These will be ready around May. Lek had like a different types of composting areas here, but now she gathered everything into one big compost pile. Lek's area with greens, which is very amazing. She's very proud of it. I'm very proud of it. It's very nice. There are like, you can see that there are also like sweet corn growing around. And these were not intentionally planted there. I think they were just thrown into the compost. This was a compost area before. So if you have a compost area and you would take some of the compost away and leave some of the compost on the ground, you can grow vegetables very, very nicely. Also some uh, pumpkins coming up, but there's like leafy greens, some salads. Those look like flowers, but maybe they're just growing. And, and maybe there's a tomato plant or something. And yeah, tomato plant over here also. And cauliflower over there. This pack of pineapples, I never thought that they would produce. It seems like, and you can also spot it, if there's like red coming from, from the leaves, normally they're just green if there's nothing. But if there's red coming out, means that they're like having fruit. So this one is having fruit and it seems like that one is also getting fruit. We have two pineapples coming from this small area, which is completely insane and amazing. I'm so happy to see this finally giving fruit. Do you know anything about pineapples? So after we harvest the pineapples, will the new pineapples regrow from the same plant or what is what is going on please let me know in the comments if you know anything about this i should probably google it it's more fun if you put a comment in look how cool this is it's like a bee it was a bee like sitting and chilling on one of the leaves it's so cool i love bees the bamboo rag is still surviving it didn't collapse yet very 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 cool there is actually a natural beehive in uh, in this longan tree but it's really really hard to spot so we have at least one natural beehive in the garden which is very cool to have outdoor shower is still standing i think i've been burning this four times or or more now and the bugs are still coming look there's a bug here it's alive see it on the it's a powder post beetle we don't like powder post beetles also a powder post beetle here yeah so i mean yeah you can also probably manually remove them but i don't know how many eggs they have they have in there so annoying either you put the bamboo into some kind of a salt solution, for example, boric acid or borax. If there are any bugs that come out, they will just die if they start eating the wood. That's an effective way of, of doing it. Otherwise, you just surface burn until they're all gone and will not end. I mean, if, if, you, if you keep on surface burning and it all becomes like charcoal, no bug, nobody wants to eat charcoal. But the, the infection here is under control right now. I mean, it's not bad. It's still very hard robust the worst part is when it's completely drilled through by holes by the, these powder post beetles and you can just press it and it just breaks but this is like super hard and robust so also nice area where we have the eggplants some salad strawberries growing legs decoration with the the pots zucchini and pots they actually produce zucchini i was very surprised and also this is like a private area where you can brush your teeth or wash your hands like it's mixing some compost and some rice husks and stuff. Papayas. And the spa area. People enjoy, like, people were hanging out here, which is really nice. People can, they can do, like, stretching or yoga or some people just want to sit here and read books. Two cyclists sleeping here, which was really cool also. There will be a video with them in a while. Yeah, and the mulberries are growing really good. There will be like a ton of mulberries. There's all of these mulberries and they're like mulberry. All these are mulberries. Mulberries over there, mul mulberry, mulberry, mulberry. And also mulberry over here. Like one's like a mulberry dome. So she's trying to like dome it up in a way. Mulberries everywhere. I don't know when they will be ready, but soon I guess. So now we have like a like a watering system up there. It's like spraying like a nice breeze. We have like some tomatoes growing, some nice roses, roses around here, and fig is trying to grow over there, but not really well. 
Some mangoes are already coming. Yay! Over here, mangoes. Mangoes everywhere. Mango boom year. So in May, I, I think the price on mangoes will be like nothing. You can get a mango for... Yeah, probably they will throw mangoes into your face because there will be so many mangoes in Thailand in May. So if you like mangoes, come to Thailand and eat uh, mangoes in May. I think that's a good thing. Thai apple tree is producing new Thai apple things. These are actually quite funny, fun to eat. Ah, coming more. Maybe this is even... Oh, this is maybe almost ready to eat. We had like two or three good Thai thing apples like these. They're really, really nice. I really like them. They have like a rosy flavor to it. And they're like really cool and nice. So during January, the, the last of the giant passion fruits was harvested and eaten. So leg is growing all kinds of other leafy greens uh, together with the asparagus. But it's been a while since the asparagus has produced anything uh, that we can actually eat. There's also like a lime thing growing there, I think. Mangoes. Caviar. Not kaffir, but caviar. Like the fish egg. Caviar lime. Ca caviar lime is doing really, really great. I'm looking forward to, to the first fruit to try the, the caviar limes. Long type of papaya. It takes so long time to ripen them up. These, these have been hanging. I don't know how long. It's getting a little bit of yellow here, but yeah, a lot of them. Like a small tree with a ton of these nice long papayas. It's incredible. And of course, our edible fence. This is all Mexican spinach. It's really nice, like all around the property, almost all around the property. So if you like Mexican spinach, you have Mexican spinach here. All you can eat Mexican spinach. Very rare. I don't see these um, vegetables, Thai vegetable things, get the fruit. Sweet corn is already getting the flowers in the top. Where is the sweet corn? Otherwise, do we have some sweet corn? Developing sweet corn. I think maybe this is developing sweet corn. And the electric and uh, internet cables were going in the air before and the passion fruit was just climbing on the cables which was not very good so we needed all the time to take the passion fruit down cutting passion fruit down but now the passion fruit dome will just be able to grow by itself so we have had passion fruit since august and now it's beginning of february and they are still dropping this has been uh, this is a bit old but i think it's really good but now the cables are going in the ground which is very nice then the plants can just grow as much as they want and we have even more passion fruit amazing i'm picking up passion fruit passion fruit passion fruit i'm so amazed that there are so many passion fruits because usually they don't eat more than one or two when i was in denmark I was lucky if I had half passion fruit per day. So we have really good conditions here. The power is properly grounded. We have grounding and uh, high speed optic fiber internet, 300 up and down megabits if directly into the house. First of February harvest, not bad, not bad at all. The guavas, they're just getting eaten by birds. Otherwise there are like worms inside, but you can see like this has been, I mean it was hanging like, it's hanging like this. Then you cannot see what's going on and then you take it down and you see how like almost all of it is missing. Because birds have been <laughs> eating it and then you can just bite off the, the edges of the guavas. But it, it has been, we have harvested maybe 20, 30 guavas during January. It has been guava season, maybe we will have more. The bamboo stick and bucket really good for harvesting papayas really this is this is just uh, the best the best tool for for harvesting papayas if you're especially if you're just one person really good recommend it build one you won't regret it here we have some uh, coconut bowl workshop going on and then you get coconut bowls like these very nice for smoothies Fabian's bamboo rack, now they're like supporting stones. Yeah. 
Oh, the red banana is ready. They're searching for ants, Mantek. which is Mantek. not a very vegan thing to do. They're, they're searching for ant egg to sell or what? Or to eat? Ant egg! This is the red cavendish. It's not ripe. I don't know. It's, some of them started cracking, so we harvested the banana. The dehydrator is going. These I put inside yesterday evening, and now it's about noon or something. And they're already drying up, which is really nice. So these guys are also cracking. I'll need to harvest these also. When it has a crack like this, it will, this banana will never ripen up. Just compost. Same with this one. So when the AQI is below 100, you can almost see the mountains. I mean, you can see the mountains, but they are just like very hazy. When it's below 50, you're, you can see the mountains quite clearly. And on the neighboring land, the mother tree, you can see the birds already munching on the papaya seeds. Just dig a hole and then eat the papaya seeds. Also, the one up there is uh, already munching. So if we are missing papayas, we just go to the mother tree. There will always be some papayas that are ready to be picked and eaten. Not quite ready yet. These look also quite good, but they're not ready. And also to mention, the cassava are really great to harvest right now. The roots are really delicious. I, I love them. Not everybody loves them. But when you can see cracks in the soil, there are like roots underneath. So there are cracks here, so already dug up some of the... But a crack like this in the soil near a ca big cassava, or even a small cassava, means that if you dig down here, you'll probably find a root that you can eat, which is a really good thing for survival mode. Even if you don't see cracks, it might be a good idea to dig out around cassava plants. And a cassava, it's also really easy to regrow. You just cut it in pieces and put it into the soil and it will just root, create roots and grow. Mega nice. And also for cassavas, you can uh, steam the young shoots or you can use the young shoots for curries. Mangoes. Look at that one. Regarding the mango stem borers, it seems like we can thin out the population by cutting off the infested branches. So it seems to work quite well and then we just stopped because yeah the the mangoes got flowers and let's see how it will develop and after the season we probably need to prune like hard prune everything maybe dig a hole and make some nice compost out of these branches the red banana that i planted and at the end of the property is just like also trying to survive the dry season it's surviving but it's not growing super well yet compared to these giants over here papayas and the master tomato you got so many tomatoes from this plant this year super nice for the papaya sellers So Lek is making cookies and energy balls. You can find them on the Vegan Camp Thailand shop.